Hi, let me share you the latest news about our search engines from the JCAM team. Let's start off with a little bit of history. Our search engines was built, let's say, nearly 20 years ago, and it was a Java library called JCAM Base. Later on, we used this Java library to create an Oracle cartridge, which is nowadays an industry standard well known uh, among our users. Later on, we created a JCAM Web Service Classic interface, which was a web service interface for the same searching capabilities. As you can see, there are three interfaces for the same engine. JCAM Base Engine has a Java interface, a SQL interface, which is the JCAM Oracle cartridge, and a RESTful interface, RESTful API. In the last year, we created a new engine that must not be named, but this one is not an evil one. And we use this new engine to create new cartridges, the PostgreSQL cartridge and the JCAM Coral. And we also use this new engine to create a microservice architecture. Why did we create this? new engine because we we developing continuously the search technology and we created uh, new uh, features like hit as you draw which i was speaking about last year ugm and all these tools have this feature functionality and again so in these new tools we have a sql interface and the restful api the Java API doesn't have a public, publicly available interface. Of course, you may heard that last year, we were experimenting with another cartridge in the graph databases, which is the Nell4j cartridge. Unfortunately, the experiments didn't, didn't result in a product. So if you are interested in Nell4j cartridge, chemical search, in a graph database, then uh, this tool is available as a consultancy project. Let's focus on the web services now. So at the beginning, we had the JLCAM Web Services Classic, which is a monolithic web service, and we created a microservice-based architecture, and that is the new JCAM microservices, which is also using the latest generation search technology. I will focus first on the microservice architecture, and later on, I will also mention that the new feature of the uh, backend engine can handle large data sets, and how and what did we measure last year. So focus on the microservice architecture. The microservice architecture means that we have a modular setup. So instead of one monolithic application, we have small modules with different functionalities. These functionalities are grouped. So for example, we have a group of functionality for chemical searching. We have another group of functionality, another module of the microservice, which is doing the property calculation. Yet another one, which is, for example, providing the IO functionalities. These modules can be used independently from each other. And here comes the next feature coming from the microservice architecture, that these services can be scaled up independently. So if your team has a request to provide huge amount of molecule to image conversion, then you can scale up that specific IO service to fulfill this huge amount of requests. And of course, if the requests are declining, declining, then you don't need that uh, high amount of resource anymore. So we can decrease the number of services uh, which is providing this functionality. And finally, we created the microservice architecture to be cloud ready. This architecture is agnostic to the cloud, which means that whether you are using Amazon Cloud, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Cloud, Azure, 
then this architecture fits your needs. In this next slide, I go into a little bit technical details. How can you set up a highly available architecture using the microservices? On the first line here, we have the microservice modules, two DB search modules, structure manipulation, and higher modules in this example. We have two of each module because if any, any of each broke down, the other can take over the requests. I have to mention that the DB modules here are not stateless, which means that we have an underlying relational database engine where these modules are connected. It is storing this relational database engine, storing the, the, the data for the searching, the chemical structure, which is used by this uh, microservice. We have a configuration server and discovery server, which is providing the, the, the configuration and the service discovery if a new module is fired up. In front of these services, we have in this case two gateways, which is forwarding the user request to the specific modules. We have two because of the highly available infrastructure. So if one gateway broke down, then the other gateway can take over the load. And in front of this, we have the load balancer, which is directing the request to the specific gateway. Maybe this was a little bit technical, but I just wanted to mention how can you use, for example, this microservice in a cloud environment to create highly available uh, service. Highly available service means that actually there is no downtime in the service. Let's go to the next topic for this microservice, which is coming from the fact that the new engine is used in this microservice architecture. Here, I will focus on the DB search. Last year, we made an experiment and we used the Enamine uh, dataset, which contains 720 million of structures, molecules, and we put 52 different queries to do substructure searches on this huge amount of data. These 52 queries were different scaffold from quite generic one, like a benzene ring, to really specific one. Even some of them even contained query bonds. For the setup, we were using an AWS instance with 70 gigabytes of RAM and 16 virtual CPU. On the right hand, on this graph, I try to summarize the results. On the x-axis, we have the seconds, which is telling us how many percentage of the queries are finished under a given second. On the y-axis, we have the percentage. So if we, if we go to the one second limit, for example here, we can see that nearly 70 or 75% of this 52 query finished under a second. These queries and these searches were all substructure searches with a limit of 1,000 molecules, which means that only the first 1,000 hit were returned. And actually, these hits were not in arbitrary order, but these were the most similar hit in substructure search to the query structure itself. If we go to a higher uh, limit, like three seconds, then we can see that nearly 85% are finished under three seconds, which is quite a fast and responsible service, taking into account that we are speaking about 720 millions of structures. Okay, finally, a very important information which I would like to share with you that we are retiring the JCAM Web Service Classic, the monolithic environment, and uh, we are trying to help to migrate our users to the new microservice architecture. The JCAM Web Service Classic end of life is in 2022 March, and you have noticed, or you may notice already, that we are not producing frequent releases from the JCAM Web Service Classic anymore, just long-term support releases. And on 2021 March, we will release the last 
long-term support for JCAM Web Service, which will last for one year. Okay, let's move on to the cartridges. Earlier, we have we had the JCAM Oracle cartridge, which is heavily used in large farm environment. And now we created two cartridges, the JCAM Postgres cartridge, which has which was released probably four years ago. And last year we released the JCAM Cora cartridge. You may ask that why do we have two cartridges? We created the PostgreSQL cartridge because we wanted to have a cartridge which is running on a free, freely available relational database engine for the users who cannot afford the high Oracle relational database engine cost. What are the latest developments on these new cartridges? So these latest developments appears both of these cartridges because both of these cartridges are using exactly the same backend searching technology, which means that they are behaving exactly the same. So whatever we develop in the backend tool, it will automatically appear in Postgres and in Cora cartridge as well. So the latest development, one which I mentioned is the non valid structure handling, and the other way, one is the Kyra flag handling. Let's start with the non-valid structure handling. When we created the cartridge three years ago and released the Postgres cartridge, we thought that nobody wants to handle non-valid structures because a non-valid structure is not searchable. Yes, that is true. But from our, from, from our users, we get, the uh, we get the request to be able to handle these non-valid structures because the structures itself are not searchable, but there are plenty of other very important data connected to this structure or connected to a specific project, which, are, which need to, needed to be searchable. So they asked us to be able to handle these data together with the non-valid structure in exactly the same place where the other structural and, com and the corresponding data is stored in the cartridge. So we created such a solution that if you are indexing a, a data set which contains chemical structures and some structure are non-valid, then during the indexation time, these structures will be skipped. Also, the search is not going to work on these stru structures, but the corresponding data is going to be searchable. So you can store it in exactly one place. The other important feature which we uh, implemented is the kind of flag handling. Historically, the more we more format is storing the chiral, chirality information, whether a structure itself or a mixture of itself and its mirror image in a so-called chiral flag. That was the original V2000 representation. Later on, uh, in the V3000 more format representation, they changed this behavior and started to use the so-called enhanced stereochemical representation. At the beginning of the, re uh, of the release, at the release time of Fosus cartridge and Coral, we already implemented the enhanced stereochemical representation. The new feature right now, that now we are also capable to handling this chirofag representation, which is described here. So if you have a structure where the flag is on, then it's treated as absolute. So exactly the one which is drawn and it will match to exactly just the one structure. If there is no chiral flag on the structure, it means that it is the structure or the mirror image. So it will match the mirror image as well, and also the, mirror Im the, the mixture of the structure, which is the mixture of the structure itself and its mirror image. Finally, let me speak about a little bit about our search engine backend. We are continuously improving the new search engine. 
And the way we are going is toward the distributed environment. This means that the data is going to be uh, cut into pieces, into, into shreds, so we are, sorry, shards, and we are going to use this sharded data for the chemical searching. Why, why can be useful for this one? Because the number of chemical structures are typically increasing. So why 10 years ago, 10 million structure was, let's say, the top, nowadays, a billion structure can even be uh, gathered or handled uh, or no, there is a request for even to, hand, to handle even billion size of structural data. And we believe that with the, uh, with the cloud environment, you can handle this structure with, with a smaller instances, not just a very powerful machine using the distributed environment. The other important uh, features which we are going, which we are experimenting with right now is the so-called rules-based search. That's actually a totally new search engine because when we were searching on a chemical structure set, we were always using the molecules itself. This search engine, the rule-based search engine, is not using the chemical structure itself. It is using the rules how the chemical structures are, are generated, which means that it is very good for combinatorical libraries where you have, for example, reactions and plenty of reactant, and the cross product of the reactants are generating a huge chemical space. In this case, this rule-based search will not work on the enumerated set, but rather on the rules how they are generated. Currently, we are experimenting with substructure search and also similarity search. I have to mention that the distributed environment and the latest news about the search engines was mentioned yesterday. The distributed environment by Tomasz Cizbazia and the rule-based search is by Tomasz Varga. So if you are interested about the details, please check uh, that presentation. Later on today, we will also have a presentation from Ben McCarlick about DNA and CADID libraries and how we handle them based on this rule-based search engine. I stop at this point and thank you very much for your uh, thank you very much for you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer that. <laughs>